our kids battled, they fought, they played their tail off for, for 60 minutes, uh, missed some opportunities and um, give Oklahoma State credit. They, they capitalized some, on some opportunities, um, but uh, really proud of, of how our guys uh, fought this entire week, uh, had a good week of practice, uh, knew, we told them they belong on the field. And uh, uh, we had a really, really good first half kept them off balance, uh, rushed in the football. Um, and then uh, on defense, we were able to, to get off the field and not sit out there for, for 90 plays like they want you to. I think we were only out there maybe 55, 60 plays, which bodes well for us. But uh, uh, in the end, we had our chances, um, and we just didn't uh, quite finish the job. But uh, uh, make no mistake, uh, I, I'm pleased because, I, I mean, for us, the mission's the mission, and we're improving as a football team. Start here with John Kurtz. Yeah, Chris, out of the missed opportunities that were there, is there one that sticks with you the most in the immediate aftermath here? Nothing that really sticks. I mean, there's there's a couple of things. We could, we needed to make a – we had a chance on a third and long on defense, and they ran a kind of a jet sweep, and, and we lost contain, and they score, maybe hold them to three there. Uh, and, and then, uh, um, you know, having a couple opportunities in the first half to get touchdowns, and, and we only get field goals. So, um Little things here and there that, that are magnified when you get a 20 to 18 game. What went into the decision to go for two in the first half there? Uh, you always are trying to get to that 14 points rather than chasing it later on. And uh, let's be honest, we had a great play called and we just didn't execute it. It was, it was open and we just didn't execute it. Or it is 14 or nothing. Appreciate it, Chris. Kels? Hey, Chris. Uh, Will Howard carried the ball a heck of a lot on – Keepers today was that the design going in, or were those things he was calling as the plays developed? How did that unfold? A little bit of both. Uh, we were able to run some of our two-back run today. I thought our offensive line played well, uh, and so we were able to kind of keep them off balance by running inside with some of our power stuff. And then uh, they were running so fast, and you could tell when we were trying to get the edge on them, they were running guys out there so fast to try to lever the ball back, and, and whether it was Seth, Deuce, Phillip, anybody running the ball, they were really, really doing a good job running us down. And so um, the read on that, we changed to, to a keep read, and, and uh, he was making some pretty good plays. And when you do take a 12-0 lead at halftime, does that change the way you coach in the second half, trying to nurse that lead, or do you go the same way? We, we want it to go the same way. Um, uh, it was windy out here, and we just couldn't, we couldn't flip the field in that third quarter. Um, had had a couple of three and outs that uh, um, we were close, but we can't have because we just weren't punting the ball into that wind very good. And they had a number of short fields. And uh, in all honesty, I think the end of the third, it was 13 to 12. And I really kind of felt pretty good because we were going to get the wind in the fourth quarter. Uh, and it, it was, I mean, it was a factor in the kicking game for sure. It was a factor in the, in the throwing game. Uh, and so, uh, you hate to give up a lead like we did in the third quarter, but I felt comfortable because our, our guys were still confident in the system and confident in what they were doing. And last one, we saw a lot more Jackson Dean, good pass to Sammy Wheeler today. How much did you have to game plan differently knowing you weren't going to have Briley today? Boy, it was kind of everybody on, on deck uh, today. I, Briley's such an impact to our offense, and to not have him was it obviously hurt us. Um, and so we played jacks a lot more, played a couple of tight ends a, a little bit more. Uh, we're down uh, some wide outs again. So, I mean, I, I, everybody needed to step up. And, and I thought, once again, that our guys competed exceptionally hard today. Fitz. Hey Coach, how good was your defense today? They were outstanding, especially in the first half. Um, they were you know, hitting their fits, um, doing a great job with disguises, um, making plays and breaking on the ball. In the third quarter, uh, we struggled a little bit to tackle. They got a couple of explosive plays on us that we just missed some tackles. Part of that was the fact that we were getting, not necessarily tired, but we just mentally were a little bit shot because we couldn't do anything offensively and they're getting 50 yard fields and 55 yard fields. And even that, we still got to be able to get out of those series and um, uh, give the, give their guys credit. Um, I thought they made a really good call on a, on a, I think it was like a third and 11 and scored on the, on the jet sweep. And, and um, we had a chance to make the play. We just didn't. What did you tell Will Howard after the game? 
I haven't talked to him yet, but um, before they went out there for the, for the second to last drive, um, after they got the turnover and, and scored, I, I just said, you know, just relax. It, you, you just put yourself in a tougher situation, but I, I'm counting on you getting us out of this situation. And he was really calm, and he put together a great drive, uh, and we were able to get back and, and score. That's the thing that I'm – you know, you always look at, at, at positives on things. That's the thing I'm excited about is, you know, after they go up score 20 to 12, um, he marches us downfield, and, and we end up getting a chance to tie it. And so uh, that's, that's a kid that's got great resolve and um, doesn't let anything bother him for too long. Uh, are the mistakes just part of his – Growing process and becoming a better quarterback. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you're, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're a true freshman, then that's uh, some of those uh, things are, are, are going to happen. And um, but you know what? That kid's competing his tail off. I, if I'd asked any of you guys, think he's going to rush for 130 today? How many people would have said, "Yeah, I bet that kid talks up, chalks up 130 yards." He's a competitor, and he's continuing to improve. And that's the thing I'm excited about. Fitz is. Um, we got better today, and we didn't play very well last week. And we challenged the guys, and Oklahoma State's got a really good defense, and uh, our offensive line played much better today. And uh, when you're able to rush the football like we were, some of those bootlegs and stuff where we're getting some guys open are, are a little bit easier throws. Thanks, Coach. You bet. John? Yeah, Chris, I know you mentioned being short, some wide receivers. Did Malik get hurt throughout the course of the game? Yeah, I think there was something wrong, uh, lower body. I, I didn't ask uh, in particular, uh, but I just noticed he wasn't playing as much. And I thought Keenan Garber, and we told Keenan he was going to play regardless. He was going to play some more. And uh, Keenan can really fly. We just got to continue to make sure he understands the offense and understand where, where he's going all the time. Uh, but Keenan's going to be a, a really talented guy, and I was excited for him to uh, get a chance and get out there. Appreciate it. Kels? What impressed you most with your defensive line play, especially in the first half? Just we were so disruptive, um, and uh, we, we eliminated in the first half. They didn't have any explosive plays, uh, and Oklahoma State lives off of explosive plays, and so we were able to control the line of scrimmage and make open field tackles. And then in the third quarter, I thought Oklahoma State did a really good job of getting on the perimeter and getting away from from our, some of our interior defensive linemen. And um, we missed a couple of tackles in space. Um, and they got a couple of big runs off of it. But uh, I thought our interior defense line, our entire defense line played really well. Uh, last one for me. Was there an adjustment Oklahoma State made in that third quarter that just made it hard for you guys to move the ball? Uh, probably not. I just don't think we executed. I think they changed some things on offense. They, they got out of their three wide receiver stuff and went into two tight ends and, and tried to say, heck with this, we're not going to let uh, our defense line disrupt everything. We're going to get on the edge and, and try to make some plays. And they were able to do that. Um, that's what I noticed more in, in the third quarter. Um, I, I'll go back and look and see if they changed and blitzed the heck out of us. It's tough when you're, when you're three and out to say, boy, are they doing a whole lot of things differently? We, we didn't have enough snaps to tell you. Last one here, Michael. Yeah, how well did uh, how well did Wyatt Hubert play today? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question. How well did Wyatt Hubert play today? Uh, I don't have the stats in front of me, but uh, Wyatt, Wyatt, I believe, was extremely disruptive. I saw he had a couple of big sacks, uh, a couple of big hits on, on, on the quarterback, uh, made a big play on a on, on a blitz where he came in the C gap and. Our defensive line is the strength of our football team and continues to play at a high level every week. And, and we're going to continue to uh, funnel and filter things back to our defensive lines. We're playing a bunch of guys in there, and they're all playing at a really high level. And I, I'm, I'm really pleased with our defensive line. And what was Justin Gardner's availability? Um, was not available today. Just uh, couldn't go today. <laughs>